Welcome. This tutorial is about modeling an apartment with Cinema 4D. Uh, based on Polygon again. I use NB to see the edges better. And I enter a room size 8 by 6 meters. And hit C and UB, the ring selection, in order to split the room with n guns, and I make one room slightly bigger than the other one. I invert that selection and I make a like a, a, a way to get to the rooms. Maybe like this. And in order to create two more rooms starting from here, I need MF again, which is the edge cut, and I make one room bigger than the other. But I don't, uh, I should use n guns, and I extrude this by say 350. In order to um, con combine two areas, like for uh, one room, I just use UZ. Now, which is the melting command, and I can check my room sizes here. It's 126, this is 450 roughly. So, in case I would like to change stuff, like for example, the position in world space at minus 50 from here, then maybe I get cleaner numbers. Same here, this is 950, it's okay. So this is the X value, this is the Z value. So let's have a look again and at the position, of course. So it's uh, four meters out there. And so I could sort of purify all my measurements. I call this layout and duplicate it. And I lock down the original just in case I change my mind. Let's select the boundary loop with the loop selection tool and extrude the outer walls. I think 30 centimeters will do. Let's go back before I extrude anything. I select all the polygons. Now I go to edge mode, do the extrusion of the edges again and extrude the um, polygons inwards, but just 12 centimeters. And not for the whole room, uh, for the whole um, apartment, but just for each single room. So let's invert this selection and we can call this layout room. Let's copy paste it. Um, now it's time to cut in windows and doors in our map. Let's go. Uh, let's press NB to see what we have selected. And I disable the snapping. Because sometimes it doesn't do what I want. And now I can cut through different things like these walls and it doesn't cut my rooms, it's just the walls I'm cutting and I hold down shift to actually get straight cuts. If something gets wrong, like in this case, I can do it again um, by using command Z. I want to cut all the way through in this case. So now you might say this is not very precise, you just cut the way you want and architects are not really uh, gonna like this. So we can of course give this straight numbers like 120 and proper coordinates like minus 3 meters which leads to um, the edges 
just add very very distinct coordinates so let's go back to polygon mode and select anything but the room so like all these windows put this to 120 and give this again a good coordinate of course I don't want the windows and the um, doors to be the same size so I could make this um, smaller right away like inside maybe 80 this and that um, all D removes the arrows in case they are in the way and for the entry I can go one meter move it all D brings my arrows back 10 centimeters to the left so it's in a good proportion here and this is to be set to maybe 80 as well well we'll see um, it's just an example of the roll so if I want to move stuff by 10 units I hold down shift again and I actually don't really want another door here that was a mistake so let's use the scroll wheel or uh, the radius setting here to um, unify this again so you just stroke over these three guys and hit UZ and the same here UZ and the superfluous points can be deleted without um, hurting the geometry so let's call this layout windows copy paste it and save the state save the file as flat too now we can get to a little trick um, because I've seen many people drawing splines and doing lots of stuff and then they extrude it upwards and they get loads of things to care about um, in my experience you save quite some time if you just um, put the floor plan uh, up like 280 for example uh, to your room height and then you just select uh, what you need uh, but let's um, turn this a bit around so I go back to my layout on the floor um, because I want to have um, proper selections first so I select all the rooms and invert the selection and give it a set selection a, um, a name of walls and then I um, because I want to have my windows higher than the doors I um, choose to deselect all the windows control click on the old selection tag and create a new one call it no windows control click and get rid of the doors as well so we create selections based on other selections and create a new one make sure you don't have the old ones selected and call it no doors now let's copy paste this object and block it and lift the copy up and the only thing we should care about is if we select all polygons we see that they are flipped well they are pointing upwards so if you press UR they are pointing downwards again this makes sense because we're going to extrude downwards now the neat trick is to use the selection to first extrude this part of the room then take for example the windows and then we want to spare out the doors we should do that in two steps set this to 80 where we added and then we put this to zero so that way we have everything created the way we need it 
and um, I don't think we're gonna need the bottom pieces so let's delete them right away and call this object walls now the only thing we should do manually is connecting those bits in polygon mode with the live selection tool we can also press ng to see better what we have selected and with the bridge b we can just close these gaps of course we could extrude it half the way downwards and then use the layout plan which lies on the floor and extrude it upwards um, this would be even quicker but then I um, couldn't easily do this kind of um, things here I would like to show you um, because I have some step inwards here you can tell this kind of kink is giving me um, more shape of all old um, apartments they have like underneath the window there's some some more space uh, to the outer walls if you don't want it um, I can show you too um, you would just select both oh excuse me like you would um, select both polygons on both sides then you don't have like going inwards then it looks straight like this but I prefer to do it um, that way and make sure only two polygons are selected in this case and I think we're done already so again if you um, want to save time think about extruding this upwards and um, combine this using connect objects and delete but I um, don't want to do this now uh, what I can use the um, the objects for um, the layout windows is for a floor but uh, we're not quite there yet I would like to get rid of the bottom polygons here just look from front be sure to be in point mode, select walls and disable only select visible elements. That way you can delete the bottom bits. Don't forget to save um, your file from time to time because you probably will do some uh, mistakes uh, if you're doing that the first time. The layout windows can be copied and made visible so you can just delete these kind of parts so call it a floor and disable it again now a very very uh, simple uh, kind of um, apartment model is done by now but we can do a lot more in details creating windows door frames doors sockets and proper ceiling so let's um, get the ceiling using up and delete so this is the ceiling now and um, if you want to make it look more interesting you can for example uh, first disable walls and floor and we can use MS in order to give it some more geometry the extrusion should go upwards we can use more subdivisions in order to have a user defined spline and if you want to you can play around with these settings to give them a unique shape you need plenty of 
subdivisions there, depending on what kind of shape you're after. So this is just an option. If um, this kind of control is like um, not your thing because it doesn't um, control too well and because you cannot change it um, afterwards, then you can also just extrude the whole thing upwards so you have some more um, uh, room for a sweep nerve you can play in there. Um, but then you should think of giving it some more space in this direction as well. So we can sweep from here to there if you like. And you can also do all sorts of nice things to the ceiling by just changing, excuse me, um, different things here like I and D will make you go, will make able to extrude inwards and outwards. But one sh thing you should think of is as long as you are in this state is to delete all the inline points. So let's press Alt D to get rid of the cross again and I only want to have points in the edges because those kinds of points mess up my extrusion, my inward extrusions, they mess up my beveling and for a clean model uh, this is way much better. So again I would just give it some room for my um, sweep nerves later on even a bit more and now let's start to play a little here with going up, going inwards, going down, going inwards and going up again so you have some sort of profile at the ceiling You can also bevel while doing this. Make sure a select boundary loop is not selected anymore. And all the corners, especially the ones that stand outside, should have a bevel. Because those bevels look really attractive once the light is coming. Pretty much anything can be beveled here a little and if this is supposed to look good you really should think about like a convex shape with maybe just three divisions and it, you should make sure you have um, good looking dimensions here. I'm not saying it's 0.5 or so, it's just an example. If you have strange um, shading running across the surfaces um, you should reduce the phone angle that way maybe you can change it from running like that. Okay, that's the ceiling bit. So let's have a look at it in conjunction. So this is the ceiling and in this space there's some more to come. We can or yeah we can do it like this and um, just grab the corners here. Um, oh yeah and of course we should think about stuff like that if the the floor doesn't have that ornaments because it's way too way too small so that was kind of um, a stupid idea to make it um, on any uh, ceiling so just select this one, uh, like the boundary, go UF, grab the insides, delete the insides and hit MD and close it again and look at it, it's closed. Um, 
So how can we make it look more interesting? Go back to edge mode and there's even some uh, there's even some point left over. It's not gonna hurt you much, but I would still like to get rid of it. And if you see points floating around, just go UO for optimizing and they will be gone. Um, I was just saying it doesn't hurt here um, to delete that point. Obviously it did. So what we need to do beforehand is select both polygons, press UZ for melting them together and then remove those points and do O again. Now it looks fine. Back to the edge selection. We can grab just the very first corner in every ceiling part and convert it using the mesh command edge to spline which essentially gives us the ceiling spline. Along the ceiling spline we can now um, sweep another profile. You could start off by drawing it by hand or you could use a rectangle which is maybe 20 by 20. Um, you could also measure it out of the model like the um, height is 22 units apparently so um, we could try it in there but that's maybe a bit too early because the idea is to put all this into a sweep this is our profile we still need to edit and the ceiling spline in they should get in there and now the um, good thing is that we can convert this spline pressing C going to point mode and now we have loads of ways to play around with the geometry here like um, we can set those two points to zero so it's um, the other two points that control looks of it and just to make sure we know what we're doing we should play around with that for example we could um, delete this point use those two points and use u s u shift s for subdividing it either u s or u shift s you will see that and um, now you can draw in a shape which you will see live um, up the ceilings like there and um, apparently something is not visible here so let's just drag it out no it's supposed to be all right and um, you can also smooth these curves by going to the spline commands and make a soft interpolation here so that way you have really nice um, uh, kind of um, profiles up there. If you want to scale it up you should make sure that the, um, the axis of this profile sits right here. So move it um, 10 units to the side and 10 units up so this um, should fit because we started off with a 20 by 20 if I change that by mistake then which I did then I can use 3d snapping enable it and yeah make it snap to excuse me to the vertex vertex and then press L again and uh, this should correct what I I'm doing up there, so let's scale it up. And have a close look. And you can change the subdivision of that, like so. And this should give you like um, full control over what is going on up here. Like you can, let's color it so we can see it better.
So the, I'm talking about these kinds of shapes. So um, if you wanted to, you could scale them up, I like using a model axis, which is up there. So you can make them bigger or smaller. You, you could like draw in everything you, you want there and you can also use numbers to, to precisely define where stuff is placed. For example, um, this doesn't really seem to fit up there. Okay, maybe that's better. Um, the coloring can be uh, turned back. And this is the ceiling corner. This trick, like grabbing a spline and using a profile in order to use it for um, more detailing, can be used all over. Our model. Um, I think you can imagine that this trick works for the windows, the sockets, and the doors. If you're confident using Cinema 4D, I think um, you can stop the tutorial now because the next steps will be more or less a repetition of the ever same workflow. If you just um, want to look how I do stuff, I will just go on optimizing stuff. Mm. And grabbing profiles, or let's rather say edges in order to create splines. So let's lose the command edge to spline and we got walls spline. Um, obviously we don't want the sockets to run all around and not especially not in, inside our doors. So let's just grab looking from top and disassembling the ceiling, holding down ALT, makes them disappear. Um, we can go inside our, wind, uh, our doors and I think, yeah, in the windows we should keep it, of course, but we should break it from the doors. Oh, I even made a window out of the entrance. We can correct that, no problem. But first of all, let's break the splines up using break segment. It used to work like that. Let's have a look, what did I do wrong? Select mesh spline. Breaking segment seems to hurt in that case. Mm. Yeah, um, because the spline is not closed yet, um, we first need to kind of break it after we open the spline. So let's have a look now at breaking it. And if we close it now, we shouldn't do that at least not in this way, and in order to connect that line again there should be a command for that as well. Joining. And we can delete points um, that are in line. And if you want to, we can correct this little mistake here with the walls 
just use a loop cut and hit um, an edge mode bridge in order to close the gaps that were created by this mistake. So, um, of course, the um, the spline should be broken here as well, so it doesn't run through the door. And I deleted. So now let's have a look at this. We still have some in points. Those um, inline points could be used in order to um, for making gaps in our um, in our um, sockets. So um, let's create a profile again, which this time is. 12 by 12 because I'm gonna use only half of it. Let's look at it from the front, zoom to it with S, convert it with C and um, select it all, press US and subdivide it once. Now you can delete everything but this let's um make the socket smaller, hit MA, grab the new point and put it to zero, otherwise our sweep would be open at the tips. Now the idea is to kind of um, sweep this around along again and when we see stuff then we can um, change the sweep or if you um, know what's going to happen then we can also chamfer this right away, I pressed shift C um, to get the chamfer. For example like this. You can use MA for adding a new point here. And maybe I want some um, something going on here. I use U shift S and press um, 3 maybe. And I can Pull them back and make them soft again. Okay, that's my profile. And in order to sweep it along, we put the profile and the wall spline inside a sweep. And we can call this sweep in socket. So it's oriented um, the wrong way it seems. It's kind of flipped over. So what we can do for example is um, to just grab all the points of the profile um, I would like to visualize this I'm pressing S and um, apparently it should be exactly the other way around. So let's zero out our um, values in the modeling axis and um, in the background we should have a look at what happens if we... Well, I'm not doing anything right here. So let's make sure we disable the snapping, select all the points and um, well what just happened is a bit strange for me as well so um, let's put it inside and um, we can experiment with just using the exact opposite of that. We can of course do this numerically using a negative size. No, that's the wrong button. 
minus 6 and this is still wrong and this looks better um, of course you could have um, probably corrected this in the settings here uh, with the rotations but so like that we have our sockets uh, they are closed but they could use some caps a fillet cap three steps um, just very very slightly looks um, quite good and um, we should make sure that it's sitting slightly in front of the wall and not like now inside the wall mm. so let's move all the points going to the profile we can see it a little better and we should make sure that the axis is well the location of the axis doesn't seem to um, change much here so we just move the points then so it just leaves a little gap to the wall no we need more than that too much again so let's just move it slightly like so okay um, in order to um, have a proper explanation um, it depends like on the distance to the origin like this is our gap from the walls and this is the start for the profile If you want it, you could make it like this. Or you could even make a tiny little gap to the bottom. Just so it renders nicely. Okay, that's the socket. What else do we have? Or what do we need? It's, um, well, the window frames can be grabbed off it just like this stop at boundary edges and step inside each door only the we're gonna only gonna do the interior doors for now because this is needs a different profile and um, we sh would have to move this by maybe 10 units but I'm talking about those loops here and again we take a edge to spline this is the door spline this time and if you want a profile we can take the rectangle again this time with a different size and put it in there so let's do it um, just the same way I can only see the spline after I um, converted it In point mode, I can move stuff around, so I should have a look at my walls. And um, now I can adjust stuff. So in reality, the frame would probably run inside here. 
and not really far out here so you see it kind of um, making a hull around the doors and if you want it to be extremely perfect then you could look at it from top and move all the walls spline points from the socket away we can do this all at once so let's do it 10 units will do and the other direction as well so you can see the swaps uh, the sweeps reacted to that and um, yeah now we can move it close to this kind of thing which is nice in order to get more details in there, we should kind of uh, use the chamfer again. Not flat, but um, one centimeter is almost a bit much, I think. Well, let's leave it and see later if we can use it or not and we can still make the make the geometry a bit lighter which we should always do same for the sockets we probably don't need that much geometry let's render it out yeah it looks good but um yeah, maybe it's an old building and has nice ornaments. So if we know that this kind of um, a point stands for the outside, then we can go U Shift S and make more points in there. U shift S four again or maybe just less because it's not distributing them evenly. And U shift S like that. And now what happens if I take the middle point here is that I get like um more um nice looking U UY increases my selection and I can get more interesting shapes inside my selection so I can pull this in or out the way I want I can shrink the selection using UK because it's really tiny and set this to soft interpolation and um, I'm not too sure whether it makes sense at this part um, you probably would rather do this um, on, on this side which is represented by the top And um, you can go US a few times grab those pull them inwards set them to soft but not that deep Okay, this is kind of making my doors look a bit more interesting. 
Now the hardest part is the windows and we probably need to experiment a little. Um, first we should prepare the uh, the windows and um, we can do so by making it um, a bit more a bit clearer to see um, by just kind of isolating the windows for this purpose by pressing UP and um, not deleting them but just isolating copies of those selections and this is where we need to um, go on so we could either use our polygon tools now to sort of um, detail this out I use MF with one cut um, just to have the centers and if I do quick tests then um, um, if I just need a quick model then I do it like this I use MS and um, just extrude with UK the middle parts using maximum angle and then I have some kind of frames but if you want to have a very beautiful model then um, you can again make a selection uh, excuse me convert the edges to a spline selection which is a window spline and then you could draw your profiles I should clean um, first of all I should remove anything else from our viewport and I should clean the window frames here because there are still points uh, we don't need so um, this could have been done earlier I have to admit but uh, I simply forgot that um, you may experience problems with those unwanted uh, um, kind of divisions and superfluous points can be um, deleted now I hope without damaging anything so I just melted um, neighbored polygons and after that I can delete all the points of course this is quicker if you just do it from the side with um, only select visible elements disabled um, now let's the same goes for that selections can be done from the side so if you're working on a skyscraper or so I recommend you to use that so now let's create a edge the spline again, this is the window spline and um, now what we would like to have is some kind of profile for the windows as well and um, you probably should grab a drawing or something especially if it's old windows then you might find some very beautiful profiles
I uh, just convert the uh, clients and um, should find out what's doing what. And these are quite strange shapes. Yeah, make sure that they are all closed, those lines. And the profile points can be done like this. I just used a T-shape for the fun of it. But um, as usual, you would rather um, draw something proper. Uh, around the null, so you can get better looking windows. I just fake stuff here really quick, but I hope you got the idea. Like windows, um, window frames, door frames. Sockets, they're all there. The ceiling, the walls, the windows, we don't need them because essentially they are uh, just named wrong. And yeah, let's kind of look at it from top and put a camera inside, which should be perspective, of course, and straight as well, and put it into a nice angle we still have to find, and give it a rather wide angle so we can see stuff. Not you here, and it shouldn't be too low, so we can. Um, leave the camera here and move it around so um, maybe this helps some and well it's a small it's quite a small um, apartment nevertheless we can try to find an angle which catches at least a few profiles or so. This was a mistake you can see here, but it could be corrected because it's based on like those kind of points. And so on and so on and let's do a quick rendering in June in Havana turned not all the way around but like like this. No, nope. more like that. And even further. In the morning. And, um, well, interesting settings. If you want to um, use it for interior lighting, um, are many of them like you probably want some oh, there are so many settings you really need to play with them and you probably need global illumination and well this is the version 14 you have a nicer renderer in the most recent version but I will come up with just something 
maybe increasing the secondary rays and a slight ambient occlusion. Okay, we have switched the textures up here and I don't think we have enough light coming in there, but there's many tricks we can use, like lifting up the gamma. Oh, well. Or using some color mapping later on. So let's use color mapping and play around. Yeah, this is getting somewhere. <laughs> it's also showing some more tiny mistakes. But yeah, um, this is my modeling workflow for a whole flat doing everything at once. I hope you learned something.